Hi, welcome once again to M5's English language learning program, Let's Speak English. I'm Gav Duncan, and I'm here on your TV screen to help you learn English. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Yes? Good. And are you ready for today's lesson? Yes? Good. OK, well, let's learn English together. Hello again, people. Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Yes, we're back. We're here. We're in the house, in the studio, and we're all raring to go. And what day is it, people? Yes, that's right. It's Wednesday, so for God's sake, don't look up. God alone knows what's going on with Colossus's underpants, and that's one image that we don't need to see. All right, so it's Wednesday, the bone dry, arid wasteland, which is Wednesday. But never mind. We can't control the passage of time. Only Superman, that bloke Flash, and perhaps Chief Mangazuto Butalezi. But we need to check with the chief. We're still not sure if he's a member of this group or not. Anyway, we know that we can't do anything about the fact that we're here on a Wednesday. So swallow the bitter pill. The bitter pill that we know it's not Friday. Square your shoulders and look Wednesday straight in the eye. Go on, Wednesday. Do your worst. We can take it. We're gods of English, chickens of the forest, gibbons of the plains, and lemurs of the... I've forgotten. Lemurs of the inner city, perhaps. I don't know. And honestly, it's not important. What is important is that this is Wednesday, and it can't intimidate us. No. Bring it on. Three revision days left in the mega revision. Let's get it on. Start the tape, people. Someone ask Viv to press play. All right, now, who remembers what we were looking at yesterday? I know, I know, you all do. But just to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's just have a brief reminder, OK? Now, as I'm sure you all remember, we were talking about food shopping. And we talked about the fact that when we say food shopping, we often mean more than just food shopping. Because when we say food shopping, we normally mean shopping for all the things we need for the house. We call it food shopping, but, well, most of us do our shopping in supermarkets. And the supermarkets are designed to have everything, or almost everything, we need for our daily lives at home. So it's convenient, it's very handy for us to go to the supermarket and be able to buy not only food, but also cleaning stuff. Detergents, soaps, mops, brooms and brushes, washing up cloths, sponges, all the stuff that we need to clean our homes. So naturally, all of this other stuff, all of this non-food stuff, this non-food shopping is included in the category of food shopping. And just think about other things we buy when we go food shopping kitchen towel. You know, the paper towels that we use to wipe up spilt drinks and things like that. The paper towels which normally come in a long, tall roll like this. Now, obviously, we all know that if we spill something, a liquid, some milk, for example, then we often use a damp cloth to clean up the mess. We take a cloth, something made of cotton, for example, and we make it damp. We dampen it. We put a little bit of water onto the cloth. When the cloth is damp, it's much more effective at cleaning. If you try to clean spilt milk with a dry cloth, then it takes ages. The dry cloth just moves the milk about the place. You end up with more of a mess. OK, so we know that we normally use a damp cloth to clean up spilt milk, but we can also use paper towels too. Just like the cloth, these towels are designed to be absorbent. Now, that's a new adjective, isn't it? The adjective absorbent comes from the verb to absorb, which means to take in or <laughs> soak up. We often use this idea with liquids. Now, think about what you use paper towels for. You use them to absorb liquids so that you can clean the mess when someone spills a drink, for example. Now, think of a sponge. 
That's right, one of these. Okay, so that's a sponge. And if we take a dry sponge and put it into some sort of liquid, I don't know, um, water, for example, what happens? What happens to the water? What does the sponge do? Yes, that's right. The sponge is very absorbent. And because it's absorbent, it absorbs the water. It soaks up the water. And when we want to clean up the mess made by a spilt drink, for example, this is why we always want to use something absorbent. If we use something which is not absorbent, then we can't clean the mess. We just move the spilt liquid from place to place. That's no good. Think about what happens in your garden when it rains. If your garden is natural, if it's all earth and grass, then your garden will absorb the rain. The water will soak into the ground and go underground so that the mole people will have something to drink. But what happens if you cover your garden with, oh, I don't know, concrete or asphalt? Well, what happens then? Concrete and asphalt aren't as absorbent as the earth, are they? No. So, if there is a lot of rain, then the ground can't absorb the water. And that means one thing, a flood. Now here we've got another new word, the noun flood and the verb to flood. To flood means to cover an area in water. If there is a problem with your washing machine, for example, you might come home and find that your washing machine has flooded your bathroom. So, a flood could happen outside, outdoors, in the street, but it could also happen in your home. If a water pipe in your house or flat bursts, if it develops a hole, then this is what we say. We talk about a burst water pipe because of the pressure in the pipe. Water pipes contain water under pressure. This means that if a hole develops in a water pipe, the pressure of the water against the pipe, pressing against the pipe, will mean that a small hole will turn into something like a <laughs> explosion. The hole in the water pipe may be very, very small, something like this. But because of the pressure of the water inside the pipe, the hole won't stay that small. The pressure of the water inside the pipe will force the pipe to burst open, leading to something like this. So, if a water pipe in your house or flat bursts, then there will be lots and lots of water in your house or flat covering the floor. This is a flood. Similarly, if it rains for days and days and days and days, then the ground outside won't be able to absorb all of the water. And when the ground is full of water, when it can't absorb any more water, when it's unable to absorb any more water, then the water just sits, covering the ground. That's what a flood is. Too much water, going nowhere. All right, now, how did I get onto this topic? Why am I talking about this subject? Who knows? Hang on, let me stop for a moment and get my bearings. Where are we? Well, well I'm here, but I don't know where you are. Okay, so I'm here and I've just been talking to you about floods and burst water pipes and things like that. So what was I talking about before? Oh yes, I remember shopping, food shopping. Yes, that's it, isn't it? Yes, we were talking about the fact that when we say food shopping, we're actually talking about more than just food and drink. When we go to the local supermarket, we normally buy everything that we need. So cleaning stuff, washing up cloths, sponges, detergent for the dishwasher, salt for the dishwasher, rinse aid for the dishwasher, washing up liquid. Oh, what else? Well, there might be lots of things which we buy when we go shopping for food. Shoe polish, antiperspirant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, or if you've got one of those fancy electric toothbrushes, then toothbrush heads. Also, what about mouthwash? Lots of people brush their teeth and then rinse their mouth off with mouthwash. And if you've got pets, then you probably get pet food at the supermarket too. And let's not forget what we already talked about, kitchen towel. 
that absorbent paper towel which comes in a long, tall roll. And that leads us on to what? Yes, what other type of paper do we need? Yes, this comes in a smaller roll, but it's something we all need, and it normally comes in rolls of four, in a pack of four rolls. Yes, your friend and mine, and hopefully it's soft and absorbent too. Toilet paper! Okay, now, back to the idea of shopping. Lots of people think that shopping is a chore, don't they? Lots of people think that walking slowly around a supermarket, looking blankly at shelves of stuff, is boring, boring, boring. And they're right, aren't they? Lots of supermarkets are really boring, aren't they? Yes, lots of supermarkets are really boring, but that doesn't mean that shopping is boring. Lots of people say that they don't like shopping. Lots of people go even further and say that they hate shopping. You hate shopping? Blimey. Well, congratulations, but well, that's a bit of a silly thing to say, isn't it? I mean, you might not like shopping, but to say that you hate shopping, well, that's silly. You might as well say that you hate oxygen. We need things, don't we? Yes, and how do we get the things that we need? Yes, right again, Captain Banana Brain. We get these things by working, to get money, to go to the shops, to do the shopping. If we don't do the shopping, then where are we going to get food from? If we don't go shopping, then what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? So, it's daft to say that you hate shopping. Shopping is essential. Shopping is necessary. Shopping is required. If you want to live, then you need to shop. All right, but some people really say that they don't like shopping. Fine, but doesn't that mean that they're not shopping for something that they'd like? Isn't that the problem? Personally, I love shopping if I'm shopping for something I want to buy. If I'm not shopping for something I want to buy, then it's a different kettle of fish. Then, when I'm shopping for things that I need, not things that I want, then, well, there's no fun. It's just mechanical, routine, automatic. I do the shopping the way a robot would. Put something into the trolley. Put something else into the trolley. Put something else into the trolley. Go to the till. Pay. Leave. It's an activity without passion. But if I'm shopping for something I want to buy, well, in that case, it's a different type of shopping. Now I want to see all the different alternatives. Now I'm going to ask the shop assistant hundreds of thousands of questions. I'm going to ask the shop assistant for their opinion. Perhaps before I go shopping, I'm going to read some reviews on the internet. I'm going to see what other people say about the thing that I want to buy. They bought it, they used it, and they know its strengths and weaknesses. They will probably give me a more accurate assessment of the thing I want to buy. So, if you think that shopping is boring, then think again. All you have to do is find something that you like shopping for. Then the whole shopping experience becomes a wonderful experience. So, if you're still not having fun when you're shopping, then you're shopping for the wrong stuff. And we're done. Yes, that's it for the day. Our time is up. The sundial has moved a bit. Well. The sundial hasn't moved, that would be silly, but the shadow cast on the sundial, the shadow caused by that little bit of metal or stone which causes a shadow, the gnomon, causes the sun to project a shadow and we can see that time has passed. And now it's time for us to go. So, off we go. You go that way, I'll go this way. I'll have some coffee and you, well, it's up to you. Have some coffee. Have some tea, have a glass of water, a cup of tea, a mug of coffee, whatever you fancy. 
I'll see you all tomorrow. Same time, same place. See you tomorrow. See you later. Bye.